I grew up in a tiny seaside town of 800 inhabitants in West Clare called Milltown Malbay. It was the 1970s and this was a small rural community long before internet or personal computers or God forbid social media. So the values and the ways of life were very different to nowadays in 2019. My mother ran a clothes and footwear shop on the main street, which was in the family for over a hundred years. In my grandfather's time, it had been called a gentleman's outfitters. The shop then known as a drapers was um, a great hub for the exchange of local news. This poem I'm going to read is dedicated to my mum. It was her untimely death that drove me back to poetry. This was my first poem published as an adult. And after it appeared in the Irish Times, I received hundreds of responses from around the world via the newspaper, social media, my website, email. So many people sharing their own stories of loss and the guilt associated with emigrating. The experience taught me in the most profound way the power of poetry to connect from one human heart to another, regardless of distance or background or culture. This poem is from a sequence of 15 poems in my first collection. The sequence is called In Memoriam, and the collection is called Where the Lost Things Go, and it was first published by Salmon Poetry in 2017. It's now in its fifth print. Um, in this book, I set out to try and capture the essence of the place I grew up in, the people, places, traditions of a culture slowly fading from memory. I sometimes refer to sacred moments. So, you know, experiences of a vivid and sometimes transcendent nature that crystallize out of memory and form themselves into poems. In Memoriam to the Draper. The town is dead, nothing but the wind howling down Main Street and a calf bawling outside the fiddlers. My mother's words, not mine, in a letter kept in a drawer these long years. She had a way with words, my mother. That's why they came, the faithful of her following leaning into her over the counter for an encouraging word or the promise of an novena. Long before we had local radio, our town had my mother, harbinger of the death notices and the funeral arrangements, bestower of colloquial wisdom, bearer of news on all things, great and small, who was home and who hadn't come, who had got the civil service job and by what bit of pull? The councillor's niece, smug in her new navy suit, oblivious to the circulating countersuit. Would you ever think of coming home? Her words would catch me, unawares, lips poised at the edge of a steaming mug, igniting a spitfire of resentment each time then draping me for days. I'd wear it like a horsehair shirt all the way back until the sunshine and the hustle had worn it threadbare, this extra bit of baggage in every emigrant's case, their mother's broken heart. I never thought to ask her, would you want me to? So I could look out at the rain circumnavigating the empty street and shiver at the wind whipping in under the door. I don't miss that question now on my annual pilgrimage home. My father never asks it. Like me, I know he feels it hanging in the air alongside her absence. I miss my mother and her way with words.